This video will show you how to analyze motion using Logger Pro's video analysis feature. I'm going to start by just setting up my screen. So when you open Logger Pro, the default is to have one graph. Um, I want to make a position time and a velocity time graph, so I'm going to insert a second graph just to have it ready. And now I'm going to insert my video. Just hit Insert Movie. I'm going to browse to where my video is stored and select the video that I want. Now once the video is open, we have to do a couple preparations on it. In my case, the video was taken at 240 frames per second. So I'm going to go right click on the screen, go to movie options, and I'm going to override the frame rate because Logger Pro thinks this is at 30 frames per second to match the frame rate of my video because it was taken in super slow-mo. Also because it was in super slow-mo, I'm going to adjust this setting, it says advanced to movie so many frames after adding a new point. I'm going to set this to 10. You usually don't need to do this, but because this is a super slow motion video, otherwise we'll be clicking through hundreds of points, so I don't want to click through that many. I'm also going to set a scale and set a origin. So I'm going to, to start analyzing the video, I'm going to click the little button in the bottom right corner. There's three little dots. This button here it says set origin. I'm wanting to set the origin to where my car, we want to track the motion of this little van. So I'm going to set the origin. I'm going to pick a point that I'm going to track. In this case, I'm going to track the front tire. So I want, you want to pick a point that you can see the whole entire time that you can easily distinguish. So I'm going to set that as my origin. And I'm going to track that same point. We also need to set a scale because otherwise the computer won't know how far things have traveled. So if you notice this video has a scale built in, sometimes you might have a meter stick laying in the screen. So the button looks like a horizontal ruler. That's a set scale button. I'll click on that and I'll use this distance that was given to us in the video. And this is 50 centimeters, so 0.5 meters. Now I have a scale. These buttons here can turn off the origin and scale if they're getting in your way. So I'm going to hide the scale right now. I'll keep the origin though. Now we're ready to start tracking data. So I'm going to forward this to the first frame. So I click in this, these two buttons, you can go backwards and forward frame by frame. Now I want to start my data collection, not the very beginning. I want to start right when this person's finger leaves the car. So there you can see the finger is just left, so I want to start here. Then by clicking the little red dot, it says add point. I will click on the point I want to track, which is the front wheel of this car. And it automatically moves to the next, well in my case 10 frames ahead, but it will move to the next spot where you want to collect data. So I'm going to continue to just track the middle of this tire. And you notice every time I click on a point, it moves the movie forward. Again, if you want to hide the, I might want to hide my origin so I can see a little better. And as you're doing this on your own computer, you can also make the movie bigger or smaller. Usually if you make it as big as possible, it makes it easier to track your points. You can always make it smaller afterwards. Again, just do the best you can. We're going to put a lot of points, so if you're off by a tiny bit, it's not going to really mess up your data. But you wouldn't want to click here, then here. You want to try to click the same point, in this case, in the middle of this tire, as I can. All right, I think that's enough for us right now. Make this small a little bit. And as you can see, it's already creating a graph over here. This is a position graph. It's actually made a graph for the X position and the Y position. Well, this is moving horizontally. I don't really care about the Y. So if you just left click on the graph, you can choose what data you want to show. I just want to show the X position. Now, my second graph doesn't have anything on it, the one that I added, but I can also just left click over here, click more, and I can choose what I want to show here. For this graph, I want to show the, y, or the X velocity. So I'll show the X velocity. Okay, there's the X velocity. If you notice, this is all kind of scrunched because of my time scales off. So I'm going to set this to about one second. To change the scales, you can just click on the last value given or right towards the end of your axis. Change this to one second. 
And also this car doesn't have, end up going very fast, so I'm going to change the Y scale to about, let's say, two. Actually, we can go a little, let's do about one and a half, or one is good. So now I have a graph of the position data and a graph of the X velocity data. Now at this point, we want, might want to do one more thing. Because I didn't start my video from zero, I can sync my video to my graphs so that the time, the, the beginning time of my graph is the same as the beginning time of my video when I want to collect data. I'm going to rewind just by dragging the slider here back to the very beginning. Now I'll go forward until I take my, there's my first piece of data. You can see the little blue dot came up. And now if I click this, these two arrows, it says sync movie to graph. I'll click that. And I'm going to say I want my graph time of zero to match up with my movie time of 0 0.02. That just says that don't start your graph from the very beginning of the movie, start your graph from the beginning of your data collection. And I'll hit OK, and it just shifts my graph a little bit and puts my first point at zero instead of somewhere else. Now at this point we used LoggerPro's video analysis feature to collect data from our video. The data was collected. If you actually look over here you can see all the pieces of data we collected. It plotted two graphs for us and now we can use um, LoggerPro's normal features. If you want to fit a curve for this graph, you could select it, hit the F of X button, and fit curves so just like you would any other piece of data or any other graph of data from LoggerPro. And it's as simple as that.